be on this amazing amazing planet world well, you know today's a gorgeous day here i don't know how it is other places and i don't know how it'll be when uh this airs because we're pre-recording it but i imagine if you really engage it's gorgeous no matter what the weather yes i'm ariel i'm shia of course the show is being here and on this podcast the theme is unraveling upsets of course none of us ever get upset no how how, how is that possible i don't know Uh, well you know I, i was seeing how that connects up with listening tell me well upsets happen when you disagree with what's showing up in your current environment frequently Mm. and listening isn't agreeing or disagreeing it's just hearing the reality of what is rather than trying to change it to what you prefer and people frequently get upset when they disagree with how their life is showing up Do do you think that a lot of upsets start with a thought that you then believe to be true and then follow it? Well, some upsets do. Mm -hmm. I would call that a thought generated upset. You know, like, oh, no, I'm not going to make my train on time. Or uh, you think you're upset because you should be upset with those circumstances. Right. Uh, But there are unwitting reminders of upsetting circumstances in your life and the mechanism of upset just takes over Mm. you know like if if somebody blows their horn and it jars you then suddenly you are uh, upset now if you allow yourself to feel what you're feeling it'll usually pass very quickly but most of us resist what we don't like and so we stay in the upset because it's not our preference I mean, of course, there are times when upset is your preference because it's easier to deal with that than it is to deal with something you don't want to look at. Today. That was a lot of nothing, huh? No, I was just realizing while listening to you that listening in and of itself unravels the upset without you having to pull a string well that it just it brings you into the current moment and no two things can occupy you at the same time so if you get here then the upset leaves you alone yeah i've seen it you won't Mm re-engage with it though because some people upsets are a lifestyle you know in fact for most people upsets are a rolling, you know, you go into one and you come up with another one. They're like uh, layered rolling upsets. And if you dissolve one, you may find another. But look, allowing something to be the way it is lets it complete itself in an instant. And that includes upset. If you disagree with it, if you think you should be different, or if you're blaming the upset on something that isn't true, you'll stay upset. If you see the truth, it's over. If you don't like it, well, that's up to you. <laughs> and then you regenerate it. Regenerate it all over the place. I've seen it so many times when people come to one of our Living Made Easy seminars, they come and they have something happening in their lives that's quite disturbing. There are often circumstances that arise that not that that have unknown quantities so you don't know what's going to happen that situation itself it can be inherently upsetting and that as people fully engage and listen to each other they forget that content of that story it disappears and the upset disappears with it and then they may still have the same circumstance they came in with but the upset is no longer there. So today it's, you know, you may have grabbed this one because you listen to it every week, but you may have found it in the archives. If you let go of 
talking to yourself about any specifics that you may be upset about and simply listen to us, listen to our guests as they are speaking, you may discover instantaneous transformation. transformation. Let's take our first guest. Okay. All right. Corinne, welcome to being here. And please tell people where you're zooming in from. Hi, um, I'm calling in from Long Branch, New Jersey. Welcome. Thank you. Nice to be here with you. Yeah, you know, it's nice to see you, Curry. Uh, you know, uh, about 45 years ago, mm -hmm. well, we've been together 40 years. Yeah. yeah, about 45 years ago, I was leading seminars about upsets. Mm -hmm. It was a 10 session series about upsets because right. that was one of the first, uh, maybe the second seminar series I ever took and you were the seminar leader. Well, so we're surprised. talking 1980. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it, what keeps playing in my thoughts right now, I find interesting if I'm getting goosebumps, uh, is the definition of upset which is to disturb the functioning, fulfillment, or completion of, the overturn or overthrow, especially unexpectedly. Uh, and there's another piece to it, but I can't. Yeah, I, if I'm not mistaken, there was something having to do with sudden impact. Yes. Oh, a, a real or imagined threat to survival. So most of us have these very high functioning minds that tease out possible scenarios and always come up with the worst. And that's what we get upset about. We, cause you see your mind is a survival machine. So it doesn't tease out easy scenarios where you win. It teases out the scenarios that you lose. So you have to figure out ways of surviving. Uh, I just find, so at that time in my life, I was upset all the time when I was leading that seminar. Uh, everything was upsetting. My, my, my life was in turmoil. Even though I was leading seminars to have people feel well in themselves, I was in the process of getting a divorce. Uh, my ex-wife asked me to leave. Uh, it was a very, and I was traveling about 8,000 miles a week, leading seminars in Anchorage, Alaska, Chicago, Illinois, and my home base was San Francisco. Occasionally I go down to Texas. So it was this never ending upset. And so it was great. I let seminars about upsets and I was upset all the time. I, it was firsthand knowledge. So I have a question for you, uh, Karine. I'm watching you. I know that people are listening to Shia and they don't have the video component. But I was watching you avidly, watching and listening to Shia. You weren't waiting for your opportunity to say something or what does this have to do about me you were interested have you always been that way um I think I've always been interested but I never listened the way I listen having attended transformational seminars there's absolutely a totally different experience for me that's true than I was I was really interested in everything Shia was talking about. It was fascinating to me. Yeah. I love that you've been talking about upsets for and teaching it for since 40 years ago. And I'm sitting here thinking, why do I still get upset? <laughs> you know? Well, you're going to get upset because your, your, uh, your mind is a survival machine. And so there are constantly threats to your survival, real or imagined. And that 
causes these upsets, which are mechanical ways of behaving that you survived with once, that your you, your mind applies to your current situation, though it may not be uh, relative to the current situation or appropriate for your current situation, you still go into those mechanical ways of thinking and feeling, body sensations, postures, all that stuff that happens when you get upset. Now, the thing is this, what keeps an upset in place is when you don't tell the truth about it. When you blame somebody else or something else for how you're feeling or what you're experiencing. That keeps it going. What allows it to complete itself, believe it or not, is allowing yourself to feel what you're feeling without giving it a reason, without causality. The question itself is born of your sophisticated mind. I was talking about a well-developed mind. Uh, why do I still get upset contains a couple of words that are obviously mind-based. I, why do I, and still there's the, the uh, and why, add that in there, why still I? Uh, it, it is trying to figure out how to change. How to not be that way. It has the expectation that Kareen will get better. And if, it identifies some aspect of how you experience yourself as not better. It either complains about it. And you didn't catch that the complaint itself, why do I still get upset, is a mini upset. It's a micro upset. It's like a, a micro discontent for being you, how you are. And the, as you see that, you pop instantaneously into the possibility of observing how your mind is structured, how it works, what it says, rather than having that thought come through as your reality, which then becomes discontent. Because mm -hmm. if you think you, Corrine, are wondering why you, Corrine, still get upset, rather than that thought pass through, uh, you will start to generate discontent because you think you haven't gotten far enough. And a better you after all the work you've done. Yeah, yes, very true. Um, it's interesting, I, I was upset, not, you know, like a, an hour ago, um, because I sat down and I, I realized I would be calling into this podcast and I'm like, let me go read what the topic is. And I, I realized I read it and I was like, hmm, I don't really know if there's anything I have to offer. Hmm. And, then, and then all of a sudden something popped in and I was like, I'm upset because last night, George and I had a, a disagreement, which is George is my husband. It's not even worth getting into. It was so stupid. Um, but in the moment, it was really real for me. And I was really upset. And he, he and I, he apologized. And there was still a wanting in my part to be right. And I realized that this more like before I called in. And all of a sudden, I thought, I, I wanted to like, wait to talk to you first. And then I thought, I could just call my husband and say, I'm sorry, because I realized that I was upset. And that's it. And so I called him and we talked and we had this nice little conversation. And like, that's, it just kind of, that unraveled, you know, like I'm not. Well, you know, I start thinking when you say you got upset, you had an argument. Well, clearly, Corrine, you're not listening. Because if you listen, there's nothing to argue about. The listening isn't agreeing or disagreeing. It's hearing what another person has to say from their point of view. And they're always right about their point of view. Even if they're wrong about it, they are right about it, you see. It's theirs. 
So how could they be wrong about their point of view? In other words, the place they see life from. I actually think in your telling us about this disagreement, the lead up to telling us about your disagreement with George, you actually outlined uh, one of the disconnects around you and uh, the reality of being upset. You said something to the effect of, I sat down and I thought I should look at the topic. And then I got upset because I thought I didn't have anything to offer. You were already upset when you sat down and then you filled in a reason for the upset as it came to the foreground. So if we roll back to being with George last night, I would not be surprised to hear that you've had a conversation with George at another time about a similar topic that you didn't get ruffled over at all. Yes. Yes. So it's you still hold on to the idea that the content of your conversation last night upset you rather than you were upset. So you found the content of your conversation upsetting. You can use anything to blame your upset on, but you're already upset. Because if mm -hmm. you're not upset, you don't get upset when somebody says something that you don't agree with. Yes, yes, that's very true. Absolutely true. It was really interesting because after I spoke with George, then I went back and I reread the, dis the description of unraveling upsets. And I realized I had not even read it carefully. Like I was so upset that I wasn't even paying attention to what I thought I was reading. So it's like you're saying, not listening, well, well, not even saying, can you not be upset when you're upset? No, you can't. Well, that's good because you think you ought to be different than you are because you're still you're still talking about it like problem solution i had this problem yeah. and i pretty I much upset. solved it myself i spoke to him i found the solution and i i mean it's all very great that you apologize i think that's you know notable and sweet and a great idea but you the whole subject of upsets you're holding in a change modality problem solution and, creates and so a problem. You, you can never you know change is interesting yes change is linear it happens over time so one linear one event follows the next event in a straight line you know one thing follows the next that's linear it's uh always problem solution oriented it's always about changing what is and making it different. It's about fixing. But you see, change takes place over time. So it's a slow, incremental, linear process. Transformation, on the other hand, is instantaneous. Yeah. It's a shift from one dimension to the next. It's like ice at 32 degrees becomes a liquid and vice versa, where 33 degrees becomes a liquid. At 32 degrees, a molecule of water turns into ice, but it doesn't do it slowly, it does, the whole molecule, it happens in an instant. Mm. Well, it's that way with transformation. Transformation happens instantaneously. It isn't like you, I'm getting a little better, I'm getting a little better, that's change. But you see, in change, you only get part way there. So you never get to completion. So it's a constant working on yourself, saying that the moment is imperfect. And when it's better, and when it's perfect, then I'll be okay. Yeah. The moment isn't perfect. Neither am I, but I'm making progress. That's it. It's a progress <laughs> thing. That, that's why therapy so often doesn't work because you're rehashing past events as though they are the cause of the current event. And I'm sure when you were arguing with George, you were rehashing a past event. It wasn't over something current. Yes, it was. Yes, it was a feeling I had of something that's happened before and now it's happening again. That's very true. 
So with upsets, there are always body sensations, postures, repetitive thoughts. So you, you thought that here we go again. Yes, yes. That's, those are the exact words I was thinking. Here we go again. That's true. Well, that's because you're resisting what is rather than allowing your life to show up as it does. It's funny. It's here we go again rather than here I go again. That's true. <laughs> No, you think George has something to do with no, it. No, no, no. You think you own George. That's <laughs> <laughs> true. Very true. That's yeah. great. Thank you. I, I really just, I just want to say I really enjoy attending all your seminars and I love this podcast. And I just appreciate both of you very much. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Well, here's what happens, sweetheart. When you fully engage with us, you leave you alone. So it's like taking a vacation from picking on yourself. Yeah. Now, if you can do it while listening to us, that means you can do it. Yeah. You so, know, I know you you do it, that you you disengage and you engage with what's in front of you. And uh, you often do it in the role of being a real estate agent, you you're very successful and you're, you're, it's almost a meteoric rise. Your, your success was faster than the industry standard. It just to make up a, a way of articulating it. it. Yeah. Yeah. That ha you have to be engaging with people and dropping stories, including the tendency to want to be upset in order to handle all the unknowns that happen around selling a house or the closing of a house if you have somebody who's a buyer. Mm -hmm. It's easier in a role than when it has to do with, with you've disengaged, you're no longer uh, in real estate agent mode, and now you're Korean at home on the couch with George. It's so much easier to slip into the non-engaged version that the the way you relate with George, I would bet you would never give yourself license to relate with one of your clients. That's a hundred percent true. Absolutely. You're right. But that's not a reflection of your relationship with George. It's a reflection of your relationship with yourself. Because mm. you treat George by extension how you treat you. Yeah. Yes. It's true. What's really cool, uh, Karina, is you're finding a patchwork of places where you've discovered how to drop the upset in an instant and um, be here for it. And in a way, we've almost set people up by the title itself. There really is no need to unravel an upset. All you have to do is be here and, and poof, it's gone. Yes. You know, got it got people here to listen, but truthfully, there's nothing to unravel. That's great. Fact, you're right. If you're here, the upset disappears instantaneously, just out of your listening. I agree. I just I feel lighter in my shoulder. Agreeing or disagreeing. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> Thank you for letting us know that. That's that was cool. well done. <laughs> and, and also thank you for identifying for people the component, one of the components that kept the upset lingering, even when the majority of it uh, had dissipated. And that was being right, that you were right all along about your perspective and that you were in a way magnanimously apologizing, but really secretly you were still well, right. That's the other thing about change. It's based in right and wrong. Win and lose. Right. It's so competitive. Then... Where transformation is a win-win. It absolutely is a win-win. And you're 100% responsible for your perspective and for your experience of life. You know, we've been raised in cultures where people blame other people for how they feel. So that's how we learn to relate to life originally or initially. But if you really want to be in control of your own life, you have to let go of blaming the circumstances for the upsets that show up, they just show up. Now, how you deal with them is, well, if you're there, you deal with it. If you're in your thoughts, you stay upset. 
great. Yes. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Okay, here we go. It's time for our listener feedback spotlight, where we hear from one of our listeners about how transformation has impacted her life or his life. If you want to learn more about our seminars, any of the upcoming virtual courses, visit transformationmadeeasy.com. That is transformation made easy, you know, easy. I love it. Thank you. This is Ursula from St. Gallen, Switzerland. And you know what I really loved about Corona? I got to go and have the Living Made Easy seminars once or twice or three times a week because suddenly they popped up on Zoom. And I'm so grateful for that. It really increased my livelihood. Thank you so much. Do you want to have well-being with consistency? Connect with people all over the world from the comfort of your own home at Errol and Shire's lively interactive Living Made Easy virtual seminars. Join any of their two-hour online events or take a deep dive into the magic of being you at a virtual weekend seminar. Come on, let's connect. Find out more and register at transformationmadeeasy.com. This Saturday, Monday, and Tuesday are Living Made Easy seminars. You can check where, uh, what time they are in your time zone. Uh, we'd love to have you. They're two-hour amazing um, get-togethers with people where you have the opportunity for living to be easy. And then our weekend seminar, our next virtual one. Is Intimacy, September 17th and 18th. That's a weekend, of course. And it's, again, done virtually, which is really an amazing platform for transformation. You can actually, if you were listening with Corrine, you can see when she's treating herself in an intimate manner, a kind manner, then her relationship with George and everything else around her follows. And then our first residential uh, in-person group that we've done in the last two and a half years. That's right. Ever since March of 2020, it's our first uh, uh, in-person course. It's a residential course, Sleepaway for Big Kids here in New Jersey, Being in Nature, October 21st, 22nd, 23rd. The foliage should just be changing. It's going to be beautiful. It'll be lovely to see people. You're invited. If you'd like to come to any or all of these, go to our website, transformationmadeeasy.com and register or find out more info. Either way works. Okay. Should we take our next? Oh, yes. Oh, wait, before we take you, Claire, you can come on in if you want, but I want to do a shout out to two people. First is to Leah, who suggested this uh, particular topic. topic. And second is our friend Ted Sandy, who's an amazing man and artist who lives here in New Jersey. And this past week, he had several family members, friends. With who, health emergencies. And, and scheduled uh, invasive surgeries and COVID. And all these people called him first uh, or because he listens. And they told him. They felt calm after being with him. And I find that he's quite amazing for turning himself into a, a relaxing person to be around. So kudos to you, Sandy, and a shout out to you. Mm. Hi, Claire. Where are you signing in from? Hi, Ariel and Shia. I'm signing in from Waldorf, Maryland. <laughs> Welcome back to being here. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Um, I wanted to tell you guys that this morning I had something really cool happen. What I was that? running errands, um, at the grocery store and I don't know, I think I noticed, um, 
that usually when I'm going through my day, I, uh, it's like, I have so many preferences that it keeps me from being with whatever's around me kind of. Mm -hmm. So it was so neat because this morning it was like, I don't know, I could even just feel the air differently. Like it felt so good. And the colors, like even in the stoplights and in the store and just being with the people in the store, it was like, I was able to see how sweet they were. It was, it was really amazing. That's great. I, I'm I, I, enjoying seeing how moved you are by your experience of being you. Yeah. The lady who checked me out just looked at me and it was like, somehow not having my preferences in the way or my upset in the way it let me like be there for that look. And she said, have a great day. And it was just so beautiful. Yeah. She meant it. Yeah. And you heard it. You were there to hear it. Yeah. It was like, I could feel my heart like, Oh, thank you. It was so cool. Good for you. That's excellent. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny, you know, if people really listen to you, Claire, they might recognize that oftentimes when you're doing something normal and simple, like going through a grocery line, uh, by the time you've paid and you're getting your receipt, if that person who's checking out your groceries uh, says, have a nice day, if you're already on to your next project rather than being right where you are, the message is hollow or it goes right past you. Or You're not there to receive it. And yeah, it was like I could see the beauty of who she was more or something. It felt like such a gift. It was so neat. <laughs> yeah, well, you weren't going anywhere, you see. You were where you were moment by moment. Yeah, it was amazing. I felt like I could access my heart instead of this isn't it. Oh, this needs to be this way. <laughs> I don't know. Yes. Congratulations. You know, it was so cool. I want to thank you guys because I'm sure it was because, you know, I was coming on the show today. And so I was hooked up with you guys. Slow down a little bit here. (laughs) Who you should thank is you, not us. And I I appreciate you. You've been putting yourself on our Zoom calls. You're coming. You've been coming to weekend seminars. You've been doing the work that allows you to discover the moment. See, and it isn't what you think. It shows up as an experience. That's so different than your thought process. It's not surprising to see you on a Monday living made easy or Saturday living made easy. It's more surprising to not see you. (laughs) And uh, you've been investing. You know, Shai said you've been doing the work. It's one of those paradoxes where working on yourself doesn't work. But the work is to be here and discover what else is possible. And you've been putting yourself in our uh, online seminars, which allows you a consistency of reality that your mind doesn't snatch away when you get upset. (laughs) And here you are. uh, And I suspect, Claire, you're not only here to participate in this podcast, to see what you can get from it. But you're here, I just have a feeling that you you have an interest in taking care of the world around you and making a difference. And it's not in what you do, it's just that you're starting to trust that wherever you are matters. And you matter. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you guys so much. Yeah. And And, um, here's the thing, you don't have to believe what we say, you're experiencing your life this way now. Spontaneously. Yeah, it isn't thought generated. She didn't go out the house and go, okay, now I'm going to listen. Today I'm going to really be here for people. I'm going to look at that stoplight. Right. I'm going to notice that it's red and now (laughs) it's green. Yeah. You're not, you weren't talking to yourself about your life, you are just living your life, experiencing it, feeling the air, breathing it in, smelling the smells, you know, 
That's such a gift to be alive. And most people are so busy complaining that it isn't showing up the way they think it ought to, that they're never there for that experience. Yeah, it felt kind of like when I was a kid somehow, because when I was a kid, it was like I didn't have all these things I needed to do or be or I just was able to enjoy it. You know, you say that. And I just had the thought, we had a little girl over our house who's a year and a half old uh, this past weekend. And she was so alive. You know, she was in her experience because she didn't have all this conceptual stuff that we've learned growing up. You know, she doesn't know how to fit in. So she's just being this little live thing. It, I have a quite long video of her in our dining room. The one wall of our dining room is all mirrors. And she sat down in floor front to of, ceiling. Floor to ceiling. She sat down in front of this large mirror panel and she suddenly got that whatever movement she made, the baby across from her made at the same time. So she would like move one leg and then move it out and move it in. And then she'd do her arms and then she'd stick her tongue out. It was just the most, she was so entertained. And uh, at some point she stood up and she was standing there and, and took a step and her parents said she's never stood this long before. And it was just so delightful to watch her engage in her wonder at herself, actually. Well, part of that was we weren't judging her. We were just appreciating what was in that moment that little girl and uh, judgments are are palpable. You know, when somebody's judging you, you know it. You feel it. Palpable means you can feel it. Uh, and uh, when you're judging you, you, you can feel, feel it. it. And your judging you normally takes place when you're upset. When you think you should have done things differently than you did. And yeah. the reality is you can only do things the way you have. I love the way you articulated it, Claire. You said you, when you were a, a child, you didn't have the ideas of where you needed to go, and what you needed to produce and how you needed to be. You were just there doing what you were doing, enjoying what you were enjoying. And it's really lovely that you accessed that childlike wonder that lives in you and that somehow that judgmental nature that lives in all of us was bypassed and the moment flooded through. Yeah, it was really cool. Lately, I found myself a bit upset in general because I have, um, there's something coming up, an event that I, I have mixed feelings about, I guess. So it was nice to kind of not I don't know. I wasn't upset about that this morning. And uh, yeah, but well, yeah, yeah, I have. You can have mixed feelings without being upset. Oh, hmm. yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yes. What you said earlier was so amazing when you said you just need to feel uh, you're upset. You don't need to add a reason to it. Yes. That was so cool. Well, people have been taught growing up and the cultures they've been raised in to blame things for why they feel the way they do. And when you stop blaming your universe, suddenly you realize that you are the author of your universe and that you feel things just automatically. It isn't because of anything. Hmm. Although so, something you just said about uh, an event coming up that you have mixed feelings about, I want to re wind back to something Shia said earlier, because it, it, it is really applicable to this situation. He said that something to the effect of upsets disappear with honesty. So I don't know what this event is, but I, I, I want to talk about events that are coming up that any of us might have mixed feelings about like, oh, I'm going to a wedding and I'm not sure I want to see those people. And there'll be a lot of family members there thing. or that type of thing. <laughs> okay. So I'm just kind of pulling that one out of the air. Intuition. You got it. <laughs> okay. So here's the question. Are you going? 
Yes. So definitely then, going. Excellent. Then entertaining your mixed emotions about it are absolutely a waste of time because the truth is you're going. One way or the other, you're going. And then you can go as if it's your idea to see who you are, see who they are, see what happens when you get there. You see, it's a really good idea to go about your life like it's your life. And you're doing what you're doing because it's what you want to do. I love that. Thank you. Isn't that fun? I mean, that, that all that is, is you have the brakes on. You're, you're pretending this is not your choice. You're going. It's your choice. So you may as well. Go for it like you want to because you're going for it. Tell you, that rather than tell yourself the lie, I don't want to go. It's clear you want to go because you're going. You know what you want and, by and what you, you got. You, you, you may give yourself reasons like, well, I'm obligated because it's family. And so I'm supposed to be there. Yep, that, I, I do. Yes, uh, it is family. You're yeah, exactly right. That's just you. Uh, it's just a reason that you give yourself for or against. The reality is, Claire, if you look, you do exactly what you want to do all the time. And sometimes you say, I don't want to do this, but you do it anyway. So it's what you want. Here's the other thing. Yesterday, could you have imagined the experience of this woman who said, have a nice day and how it struck your heart. No, I don't think I could. Well, you have no idea who those people will be at the wedding when you get there. Especially You'll if you come from the point of view that you're bringing you there, not that you have to be there, like you're creating it and you're the center of your universe rather than they are, oh, Aunt Molly, who I can't stand. <laughs> That is so cool and empowering. And by the way, you guys are amazingly intuitive. I don't know how yes. you do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I'm getting better at not editing my thoughts as they go, just letting them flow out my mouth. But um, uh, the other person you don't know who's who when she gets there is you. See, Let's take Aunt Molly, who you didn't like back when. That was recorded from Claire back when and who she was in her unknown, already ongoing upsets. If you take a look at the conversation we had with Kareem, when she was in the midst of that altercation, or it's a little strong of a word, uh, disagreement with George, she was clear in that moment that it was George and he was wrong. But we were suggesting to her, and she looked at that she was already upset when she went into that moment with George, and that there were other times George has said things or requested things that are similar that she didn't find upsetting. So she started to see the upset was hers when she went into the situation. Well, this morning, when you were in the store, that was this morning, right? Yeah. Yeah. You didn't have any history with the lady behind the counter. No. Well, you see, you have history with the people that are going to be at this event. And the history was recorded from an upset version of Claire. And she can either be right about that past videotape. And, and it is a videotape why. because it was really old technology. Now it's digital. Back then it was mm. You can write about that, or you can be there to see who you are, see who see, they are. See, these people are newly, rather than think you already know who they are out of a decision that an upset you made years ago. Wow, that's amazing. It's like I haven't been being fair, for example, to well, me. Well, slow down. That's a little harsh on you. Oh. You are being as fair as you know how to be. But when you're in the midst of an upset, you are not in control of your own. No, your reality, of, your reality is it's them. The, see, upsets are like a drug in a way. They skew your visual 
uh, interpretation of life. They they are based in that uh, somebody is doing it to you and they're wrong and you're right. And well, at that point in your life, that was reality. But now you have a new possibility, sweetie. And I don't know about you, but it, it occurs to me that another way that we haven't addressed that uh, I can tell when an upset is starting to brew for me is sound. I find sound offensive. Like if oh. a car is loud going by or if the television is on a little bit or... Or sound- Shai is scratching the chair with his fingernails. <laughs> That's different. Yeah, but that doesn't matter. Oh, yes, but that's true. Yeah, Yeah, that is true. If you're not upset at all, that's just a sound. That's right. But if there's something that's disturbed in your system, then you're looking looking to find what it is. It's like when we used to go to our hair cutter and somebody would be loud and he'd get upset with them. It's like you're on scan for what's producing your irritation. Oh, that's so interesting. Yeah, you're blaming the universe rather than realize that you are your universe. Oh, that's so cool. It really is. Oh, my gosh. Thank you. I'd like to do a shout out to Claire. Yeah. We so enjoy being with you. There's something so refreshing about you, Claire, really. You have no idea what a cool person you are. Well, you guys are amazing. I love being with you and with all of the people. You know what they say in Germany? They say Selba, Selba. Selba. And what that (laughs) means in English is takes one to no one. (laughs) I appreciate that you uh, say that we're amazing, that that's your experience. Oh, thank you. Uh, Thank you. But don't let it get in the way of how much we enjoy you. And don't let it think that we're in any way better than you are. See, you can use our, for want of a better word, creativity, uh, 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 self-expression, to think that, well, I'm not that good. You are. I'll bet you there are people listening to this uh, podcast right now thinking, wow, I wish I could be as articulate as Claire. Oh, don't roll your eyes at me, young lady. <laughs> well, we're all kind of the last to know our own greatness is really. Yeah, you know. So. <laughs> thank you guys so much. Hey, thank you. And yeah, thank you. Really, Claire. it's it's been a gift and we appreciate it. We appreciate you exactly as you are. Thank you. If you found this episode to be as inspirational as I know it is, well, maybe not, as inspirational as you find it, share it with a friend. Allow them the opportunity to find out about instantaneous transformation and how amazing they are. It's a gift. They will thank you. Uh, And even if they don't, I thank you. So I'm encouraging you, if you have the impulse to do that, please do. Next week's episode is working on your workmates doesn't work either, which is kind of a play on working on yourself doesn't work. Working on your workmates doesn't work either. We'll be back next week. So come on back. And don't miss. Guess what? Being here. <laughs>